Hi and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, welcome. My name is Meg and this is Skylark Beauty. I apologize if I look a little disheveled. It's because I am. I just got off of work and walked back in the 90 degree heat so my flyaways are doing their own thing. So it was a travesty but I lost all the footage from my previous empties and I threw them all out and somehow the footage just got lost in the ether so that's okay, I have plenty more empties, but these ones are ones that I actually liked slash would repurchase or received in like an Ipsy bag or a subscription of sorts. I'm definitely gonna have to break this down into one or two parts, possibly even three, depending on how many products are, but just to give you an idea, this is what we're working with, it's a lot. So we're just gonna jump on in. All right, so some of these things just didn't work for me. So if they're full, I'll explain why. I don't always think that products are just plain bad. Sometimes they're just not meant for my skin type or they aren't what I had thought they were going to be or fulfill the purpose that I thought that they were going to fulfill. So I'll be honest about those. I don't just like trashing product. I don't like it when influencers are just like, oh, this is crap, this is crap if it's not crap and it just didn't work for them. For example, this is the Origins Ginseng SPF 40 Energy Boosting Tinted Moisturizer Broad Spectrum SPF 40. So I think I've mentioned in previous videos about SPF that I don't think 40 is enough. I usually try and go for my face SPF to be at least 50. There was nothing particularly wrong with this. It had a slight herbal smell, which might be off-putting to some people, but it did in fact have a tint to it. Now, quite honestly, the tint was very light, so I can see it leaving a white cast on a lot of people. It does not say whether it is a chemical or a physical sunscreen, but if it's a physical sunscreen, it would definitely leave a white cast on anyone with a deeper complexion than mine. And I, I would put myself at like a, during the summer, like now, a light medium, and then in the winter time, a light. And for me, it was even a little too white casty, so to speak. I did not go through it because of that because of the SPF level being too low, as well as the fact that for me, the ginseng essence smell was a little too much. And once again, I didn't think the SPF was high enough. So this did not work out for me. It's a lotion cream formula. So what I found was if you have too much skincare on underneath, it can pill if you use the proper amount of SPF that you're supposed to, which is two finger lines worth. I usually just draw the lines on my face, two on my forehead, three on my cheeks, one down my nose, just to make sure that I have enough coverage. So if you do that, it can ball up depending on your skincare. And I feel like most people do some kind of skincare or moisturizing prior to putting on primer or a tinted moisturizer. So that could be an issue. The next product that we're looking at is the Cream Shop Pink Water Cream Ultra Dewy Face Cream. And this was in collaboration with Hello Kitty. I love Hello Kitty, anything Hello Kitty. I think that I've made that very clear in past videos as well. And the Cream Shop does a lot of collaborations with Hello Kitty. I have a Hello Kitty I think it was like the 50th anniversary or 25th anniversary setting spray and things like that. Now, this is past its prime, but it has kind of a sweet watermelon scent to it. And it was very much a water gel cream. It absorbed enough when you put it on the face that I wouldn't necessarily call it dewy. It dries down, absorbs, and does not remain dewy. It's just like a water cream. If you compare it to, let's say, the Laneige Water Bank, I think it is, cream, or the Belief Balm, Aqua Balm cream, very similar to that. So you get a hefty amount of product. You get 1.69 fluid ounces, which is quite a bit for a facial cream. I didn't get through it all the way. I did find that it was a nice moisturizer after my brightening essence that I put on. So I do my brightening essence, then the moisturizer, then then my SPF, and then my primer. And 
foundation. Those are the layers and skincare that I use for my base. So I would repurchase it, but bear in mind that if you don't use it every day as your only moisturizer, if you have multiple moisturizers that you like to go through, because I feel like sometimes just like your hair gets tired of certain shampoos and conditioners and you might have to rotate those, it's very similar where I think that your skin can get used to or tired or almost immune to certain moisturizers. So if you rotate, you might not get through this like I didn't because there's so much product in it. So just something to think about. You can buy it on their website, The Cream Shop. I don't believe that The Cream Shop is available at any other retailer, to my knowledge. Whew, okay. So everybody, wow, I used this all the way up. Everybody remembers the Farsali Rose Gold Elixir. So you would get one fluid ounce and this would go bad, I found, very quickly. And they stopped selling it. Now I believe they reformulated and they sell the Unicorn Drops Essence, but I don't think they call it that anymore. And they do sell this again, but this smelled like oranges. Ooh, ooh, that's chunky. Oh, that has gone bad. It smells like paint. Like I said, the shelf life really wasn't that good on this and you couldn't use too much or else your makeup was slipping and sliding all over the place. And I also found that you had to keep in mind that if you wore a water-based foundation over this, oftentimes it would separate. So if you were using a dewy foundation or skin tint that was oil-based, they got along just fine. But Anything that was water-based, foundation-wise, what was that noise? Did not work. Did not work. What is that noise? I don't know if I would ever be interested in trying out the new formulation of any of the droppers. I feel like this was very 2017, going into 18. People were loving to drop it all over their face, but. I did try the unicorn one and I liked the unicorn essence as a primer, but I would not suggest this unless this would be the only primer you use and if you only use dewy oil-based foundation and base products. Ooh, this one's a very recent one and I'm very disappointed. It's not cheap. So this is from In Beauty Project, which I believe is a K beauty brand that is new at Sephora, relatively new at Sephora, at least in the last six months. And I was really excited for it because of, I'm not gonna lie, the packaging got me. The packaging got me. They really know how to make things look appealing and not in a tacky way, in a very fresh, youthful way. And the names of the products are very appealing. So this is the Porefine Pore and Texture Serum with AHA, BHA acid blend and peptides. It's beautiful. You can get refills. It's like a heavy metal packaging. And the refills themselves are plastic. So I don't really know why. See, so this is the refill. So the refill cartridge is plastic itself. You only get an ounce. It feels like you get a lot more product than you actually do, but you only get this much product. So it's refillable, but the fact that the refill is plastic and it's not like a pouch that you can squeeze, uh, I don't know how environmentally friendly that is. The reason why this is a fail, and I'm pretty much gonna give this away brand new to somebody else, is that no matter what I did, no matter how well I toned and squeaky clean my face was, it pilled. It would just pill. I tried using a lighter layer, it would pill. I tried using a thick layer, it would pill. It would just pill, so the, it would just kind of gather in clumps on my skin. And it wouldn't really sit evenly on my skin. As much as I wanted a pore refiner and something to help with texture and the AHA and the BHAs, I was like, this isn't even going to consistently exfoliate or minimize my pores because it's all over the place. It's clumping up all over the place. So especially when you buy it new, not the refill, I'll try and put the price up. It's expensive and it's only at Sephora. I am deeply disappointed, but you can't deny the packaging is on point, but don't let it fool you. It pills, it pills. And I don't think this is just a skin type thing. I think that anyone would run into this problem regardless of what their skin texture is like or how dry or oily their skin finish is naturally. I just wouldn't recommend. I'm so bummed out about that.
So that's on the top of this. I just put it right in the bag because I was like, this is not gonna work. I've tried to make it work 50 times. This is another one. So this is the Rich Bitch Cactus Vitamin C Moisturizer from Freck. And I really wanted to like this. Babs Beauty on YouTube is one of my favorite micro-influencers. And I really, really wanted to try this product because she always raves about it and uses it as one of her base products, almost like a primer slash moisturizer. And it was on sale for a great price on Ipsy Boxy Charms flash sale section. And you know, it smells really good. It has a very light floral fragrance to it. And it is rich, but not in the sense that it doesn't absorb. I mean, it, re it really is a nice cream and I can see it getting on well with a lot of people, but for the type of moisturizer I need, I need an oil-free moisturizer that is more like a water cream and this is much more like a traditional lotion cream. So it kind of clogged up my pores as well as sometimes if I used a little too much, it would pill. So I'm trying to think of how I can repurpose this, maybe use it at night after my serums and kind of use it as a slugging layer. I'm not quite sure. I just don't want to give up on it. But the way that I wanted to use it was the way that Babs Beauty uses it. And it just simply doesn't work like that for me. I'll probably have multiple of these in here because this is the serum, the essence that I was talking about that I start out with every single day, regardless of whether I'm going to go in heavy with makeup or just have a light makeup day. But let me just be honest and say I never have a light makeup day. I'm zero to 100. I'm not very good at the whole no makeup makeup look. I have not perfected that. I think it's a mixture of things. I think that I like the ritual of putting on my whole face in the morning, getting ready. And also for me, when something is done, let's just say partially or lightly, I feel like I look like I only put half of my face on, so to speak. I just feel like I look undone in some manner and I might as well just not wear any makeup. So I always use my essence, but very rarely do I not put my full face of makeup on very rarely unless it's an off day when I'm not leaving my apartment or house or anything and I don't need to be seen. That's not to say that I wear makeup to appease others or to come off as more attractive. I just, like I said, it's almost like a little ritual ceremony for me and an indulgence that I look at as sort of me time in the morning. And I just love makeup. So why not use all the makeup and products that I have, right? Go through one of these about maybe one every three to four months. So I do have it on Amazon as a subscription on Amazon and you can get it cheaper through subscription only by a few cents. I don't even know why they do subscriptions when you're only saving a few cents. Wow, why don't I say what it is? This is a Saranghe Deep Radiance Essence and Serum. It smells very strongly of herbs, eucalyptus, uh, what else? It just smells very herbal and it's very invigorating to me. My boyfriend smelled it and was like, whoa, what is that? I cannot put that on my face. For me, I love it. That's part of the reason why I use it. I do think that it does help with brightening. So it says that it has 10% Felinus Lintius Extract, which I'm guessing is what makes it smell very pungently of herbs. And you get 40 milliliters, which is 1.35 fluid ounces. You don't need a lot. It just sinks right into the skin. And I do think that it does make a very big difference in your complexion if you use it consistently over time. And I use it every single day. I have multiples of these that I've gone through. This is just nostalgic. This was one of my first perfumes that I got into when I was getting into perfumes and they don't make it anymore. So you can get it on fragrance.net, but I have no idea how old the stock that they keep is of this, but I will keep buying it until I run out. I get the one ounce and then the 1.7 ounces, and they're very cheap because they're by, I believe Liz Claiborne, or yeah, this is lucky number, why, why doesn't it say on here? It's lucky number seven, I think. It's a very light oriental musk, tiny bit spicy perfume and I would highly suggest getting it while I think they're still selling out the stock because you can get it at a very reasonable price on fragrance.net. 
it's my favorite perfume. They all come with this cute little stopper. No lid, but that's the stopper. I've gone through so many. There's probably more in this bag, but we'll see. So I would, if I remember, I'll put the notes up on the screen, but try it if you like oriental musks with a hint of floral and spice. Not too spicy. Peppercorn, those type, mm -mm, that's, those smell very bad on me. They smell like pepper on me, like pho almost, you know what I mean? Like the herbally, savory food, a a Asian food, no. But this is not like that. This is perfect. Okay, so this is another one that just straight did not work for me. This is the Mitchell and Peach Flora number one, fine edition. You know, it's always a gamble when you blind buy a fragrance. We all know that. And sometimes it's the packaging, sometimes it's the notes that you read, and you're just like, yeah, those mesh really well with my chemistry. And that's what I thought with this. And usually I'm pretty dead on. I'm pretty dead on and pretty comfortable blind buying fragrances if it's described accurately enough. However, um, this was not. So once again, the floor number one. It smells nice enough in the bottle, but when it was on me, ooh, goodness gracious. It smelled like wilted flowers that had gone bad and were rotting. And unless that's what you're going for, I wouldn't suggest it. I'm sure it smells good on some people. And once again, perfume and fragrance is such a personal type of beauty product. It really wasn't for me and it's a shame, but I'm gonna try and pass it off because I have pretty much the whole bottle and I don't wanna waste it. Ooh, we have a setting spray. Okay, so this is the fourth ray do it hydrating hyaluronic mist. Now, do they still make this? I'm not sure. <sighs> they used to have this fresh AF setting spray from ColourPop that smelled like roses. I love anything that smells like roses. And they stopped making it. So I bought a few of them as backups because I kind of stalked their website. When they put it on sale, that's always fishy. And then once it's gone, it always has like, email me when back in stock. And for the most part, it doesn't come back in stock. So I thought I'd try the Do It Hydrating Hyaluronic Mist because dewy setting sprays work on me. I'm wearing one today. But what does not do it for me is this. It smells like rotten cucumbers and I got this brand new, brand new, I mean, I, I haven't used any. It smells like rotten cucumbers. I'm not about to spray that on my face. No, I mean, for a, for sensory reasons as well as just, I don't know if it's gone off or anything like that. And I can see little particles floating around in it. That can't be good. So that's a bummer because I think it was $12 and I had their glowy one. I think it's in here somewhere. That's just a bummer. I mean, it's 4.15 fluid ounces. It's a lot of product and setting spray. And I do fly through setting spray like water. I'm just disappointed that I didn't even get to figure out whether I liked this or not. But once again, I'm not sure if ColourPop even makes this as a setting spray. And I'm not even sure if Fourth Ray is doing setting sprays anymore or ColourPop. That's something that I think they need to kind of reinvent themselves on because they had some good setting sprays. The Fresh AF one was great. I don't know why they got rid of it. Going along with the ColourPop trend, this was the So Radiant Brightening Eye Cream from Fourth Ray. So it's golden tinted. So it does have a little bit of shimmer particles in it that I think helped with the brightening. So whether it was artificial brightening, whether it actually brightened it's debatable. It comes in the exact same package as their lip masks, and if you have one of those bad boys, you know it's almost impossible to get through one of those things. I have three of them, mistakenly thinking that my big lips would go through them quickly, but I haven't. They're great though. Their lip mask is better than the Laneige. I will stand by that. Their lip mask is better than the Laneige. And I usually put it on before bed and then I put it on before I do my makeup and just let it marinate to get all the good old dead skin off my lips. I'll just buff my lips out and then put my lip product on. Yeah, just little tip. Put your mask on your lips while you're doing your makeup 
and then put on your lip product for the day. Especially with matte products, just glides right on and you don't have to worry about your lips being chapped for the rest of the day. This So Radiant Brightening Eye Cream was more like an optical illusion. I don't think it actually brightened over time with usage, anything like that. It was just a matter of having little tiny gold flecks in it. I didn't go through it as I showed. I didn't think that it was effective as well as the fact that my under eyes don't really need brightening or moisture at all. I don't have dry under eyes, thank the Lord. I'm lucky in that respect. It wasn't really for me, but if you want a simple eye cream that moisturizes and offers a little bit of radiance and the fact that it literally has shimmer in it. I mean, they're not like glitter particles, they're not huge, but just, you know, subtle shimmer. Personally, if I'm putting makeup on over my skincare, you're not gonna see it anyway. So if you are big on the no makeup makeup, perhaps this would look nice, but didn't really serve any purpose for me in my skincare arsenal. All right, we have a foundation, Huda Beauty Faux Filter Luminous Matte Foundation, and I got the shade Creme Brulee 150G. I did not finish this. It had a scent. I don't know if they even make this anymore at Sephora. During the winter, I like wearing matte perf perfumes. Wow, I need a nap. I like wearing matte foundations during the winter. I don't know why, but they just wear better on my skin. I live on the east coast of the United States of America, around the DMV area, so we get all four seasons for the most part, and, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going through puberty again. When it gets cold out, matte foundations actually sit very well on my skin, which kind of goes against what you think it would, because my skin does get drier in the winter, but as long as I really hydrate prior to using it, it sits really well. And for some reason, when I use dewy foundations in the winter, it doesn't sit well on my skin. And when I use dewy foundations in the summer, when it's really humid and hot, they sit better on my face. I'm wearing the Danessa Myrick's Yummy Skin Serum Foundation today, and it is nice and dewy. I mean, I always set my face, you know what I'm saying? I don't want my makeup coming off when I go like this and stuff like that, or when I hug people. So I always set my face lightly with some loose setting powder, but yeah, it, it's interesting. Does anyone else find that different finishes of foundation sit differently on your skin depending on the seasons where you are? I'm interested to know because I'm not quite sure how that whole phenomenon works. But this was super thick, super thick, to the point where I would have to cut it with a soupier or more liquidy foundation and a highlighter, liquid highlighter, just because it was so thick that it was like spackle on my face. So I only needed the tiniest amount, which is why this went bad. It also depends on the type of coverage that you're looking for. This is super, super, super high coverage. I like medium to full coverage. I'm not really a light coverage type of person. It's not to cover anything specifically, like blemishes or anything like that. I just think it makes like a very nice canvas to do whatever bronzer, blush, contour I'm trying to do, highlight. I like having a pretty blank canvas. So even though the serum foundation is pretty sheer, I, I, I always concoct my own foundation. So I have yummy skin serum foundation mixed with the L'Oreal Super Spreadability or something foundation, which is a little more full coverage. So I mix those with liquid highlighter as well. So that's how I have the coverage I have today, which is, I would say is like medium coverage. But once again, I mean, this is like concealer in, in, in my book. There's a good chance if you got it that you wouldn't be able to use it up by the time it goes bad. Just a thought. Another one of the Farsali gold, rose gold oils that went bad. It wasn't a backup. It was just bad when I got it. So backups are a whole nother thing that I wanna do a video on. I've been watching a lot of Lauren May Beauty and I think that she's a lot like me in the fact that she battles with the urge to get backups of things that she likes. And then the reality of, am I really going to use up the one that I have right now? or is the one that I get as a backup gonna go bad by the time I use the one up instead of just buying 
a new one when I use it up. But that fear stems from the fact that I think the beauty world is just cycling through products so quickly. And as a result, a lot of products get discontinued, whether it seems like they're well loved or not by the public. So I don't know how that even works. I've tried to combat that feeling of, but what if they stop making my favorite product? Because ultimately you're going to find one that works for you, that you like just as much if what is my hair doing? Sorry. That you like just as much, if not better. There's a whole sea of products out there, but it's very easy to find a ride or die product, a holy grail product, and just be terrified that it's going to be discontinued. Whether it's a color, like a lip color, an actual product, a foundation, an eyeshadow palette, what have you. It's still this little fear in the back of my mind that I'm going to lose access to it. I've actually bought back up eyeshadow palettes, but to be fair, I go through eyeshadow palettes because I wear eyeshadow every day. If I find a favorite eyeshadow palette, there's a chance that I will buy a backup of it. And in a similar vein, my mother actually goes through the same eyeshadows. And unfortunately, they're not singles, they're in eyeshadow palettes. Her current favorite is in a Beauty Bay palette. And so she buys multiple of the Beauty Bay palettes and only uses like one or two of the shadows. So far, we've searched high and low for a comparable shade or shades and we just can't find them in like singles. We, we just can't find them. As of right now, she's just buying the palette whenever she runs out of those colors. I think that I'm gonna cut this video short and then move on to those products uh, in part two. And they're probably, they're probably gonna be like five parts to my empties because I just have squirreled them away for this long. And bear in mind, there was an empties video before this that was 45 minutes long and I had thrown all those empties out thinking, okay, I recorded it. I was done? Nope. That got deleted somehow. You were spared one video, so to speak. Thank you so much for watching. I hopefully will see you in part two. Please like and subscribe. Have a great day wherever and whenever it is that you're seeing this and I will see you in my next video. Bye.